Transform the image to 90s anime style. Uh, okay. Change the view to the woman's left side. Keep the same pose. Okay. Change the view to the front of the woman in the hat. Keep the same pose. Uh, okay. Quen Image Edit has released and there's been a lot of hype again. After using it for a bit, I have mixed feelings. Maybe you need the full model to get the best results, but on a system with 8 gigs of VRAM, the results are hit and miss. If you still want to give it a go, I'll show you how to set it up since it's a bit of a pain. So follow along and let's get into it. On the project page, they have some samples of what it's capable of. So you can do rotations and then the usual style changes and then some additions to add things into pictures uh, or remove items as well. There's also a big emphasis on text editing in their blog. And I tried that out with some mixed results, but I'll show you a little bit later on. And just like Quen Image, this model is huge. So it takes quite a bit of work to get it to work with uh, with 8 gigs of VRAM. So let's get into all the different files you need to have it run on a lower VRAM system. The first set of files as usual is the GGuff versions of the model. I've been using the Q4KS. This one is 12 gigs just for a Q4 and generally bigger than what I'm used to fitting in 8 gigs of VRAM. Usually I pick models that are a bit smaller or around 8 gigs, but for my testing Q4 will load uh, and it doesn't run out of memory when it's doing the image editing itself. So just grab the size that you want and then put it in the unit folder. Before leaving this Hugging Face page from Quantstack, there's also another file that you should get. This is inside the mmproj folder and this extra file, the Quen 2.5 VL7B instruct mmproj, you should also get this file and you'll need it later for the text encoder and I'll explain why. So in addition to the Quen image model, the workflows from Comfy also pair it with the Quen 2.5 text encoder. This is also a huge model and when I ran it with just a regular FP8 version, it took a really long time because it was offloading to CPU. So I decided to grab a smaller GGuff file. Now with the GGuffs, there's also another problem. You need to do a bit of setup with that previous mmproj file and with the GGuff before it'll work properly. You also need the latest version of the GGuff custom node and Comfy UI. But for now, for the text encoder, I can only work with the Q3 model. Even on Q4, even though it's four gigs, when it's loading and doing the text encoding, I would always run out of memory. Sometimes you can just rerun the workflow and it'll work fine the second time. And I was doing that with the Q4 GGuff, but eventually I just switched to a Q3 and I never ran into the outer memory problem. So when you download the, the GGuff for the text encoder, put it in the text encoder file, and then put the mmproj file also in the text encoder file. The last thing you have to do after you put the text encoder in the text encoder folder is to make sure that your mmproj file is named in this format. So the, the beginning, the Quen 2.5 VL7B instruct, that has to be there. I think when you download the file, it's not there by default, but just make sure that that first part is there and then you can have the, the rest of it the same as this. Then if you go to the Comfy UI Quen image edit site, they also have links to a few of the different files. Make sure you grab the Quen image VAE if you don't have it already and put that in the VAE folder. And then the last file that you need is this Quen image lightning four steps. So this is especially useful for low VRAM users and if you just want speedier generations. You can either grab it from here or you can get it directly from the lightx 2 v They're also the group that did the LoRa for the WAN 2.2 speedups. Just grab this four step v1 save tensor file and save it in your LoRa folder. Okay, now we're back in Comfy UI. We can take a look at the workflow. First of all, just make sure you've updated everything to the latest version, your latest version of Comfy UI, and also the latest version of the Comfy UI GGuff uh, custom node. This one's important because otherwise you may get some errors if you try and load the, the text encoder GGuff. Okay, the workflow itself is based off the official Comfy UI workflow, but I did make a few adjustments here, getting rid of the negative prompt since we're using CFG1. And after reading a little bit on, on Reddit, I also removed the connection on the VAE for this new text encode Quen image edit prompt. But let's start at the beginning. So first we have the load models. Um, I've replaced the load diffusion model with the UNet loader. So you put the GGuff in here. So I have the Q4KS here. Then the clip loader, I've also replaced it with a GGuff version. And I use the Q3 as mentioned before. And then just make sure you have Quen image selected on the second line. And then for VAE, pick the Quen image VAE that you downloaded. 
from the model chain that goes through the usual speed up so the stage attention and uh, torch settings i always have these on if you don't have these installed again you can just bypass them or delete both of these two nodes after going through these it goes into the lora loader model uh, node and this is where you put in the lightning four steps i just use strength one from here that goes into the shift and then the shift goes into the cfg which is also one here and then that model gets fed into the k sampler model so that's it for the model side from the clip it's a little bit more complicated the text encoder gets loaded into the prompt but there's also a few more uh, inputs into this prompt that's that's usually not in some of the other workflows but this thing also has options for a vae and an image input and i think because the quen text encoder also understands images that's why it's like being fed an image plus the the prompt and then all of it getting combined into the clip encoder so just moving a little bit to the bottom here what's feeding into the image you have your load image node that goes through a scale image to one megapixel just to make it a manageable size. This is similar to flux context as well. Then the output of the smaller image goes into the input of the prompt. The output size of this one also gets fed into the VAE encode, and then that latent gets passed into the K sampler latent image. So now the size of your original image gets resized proportionally to one megapixel, and that creates your output image size as well. For this VAE encode, obviously plug in your VAE into this. Now going back to the prompt, so now we have the image and clip connected. The VAE was connected originally, but some people on Reddit have tested it and there's a note on Comfy UI as well. But it seems like if you disconnect the VAE, it should help with some of the weird zooming in issues that Quen image will do. I've tested it and not seen too many differences, but, but if people are getting better results, then that's what I did as well. So I've disconnected the VAE here. Without the VAE, we need another way to load it into the uh, K sampler. So this part is now mimicking what Flux Context uh, workflow was doing. You take the conditioning output of the prompt, feed it into a reference latent. So now your reference latent has the prompt and image, both from the prompt uh, itself and as well as the VAE encode latent going into here. This will become your positive prompt. And then the output of this also goes into uh, conditioning zero out. So this zeroes out the second conditioning. Uh, and then that gets fed into the negative prompt because you don't need anything for negative. And those four become your inputs for the K sampler. So now moving to the K sampler, this one's pretty basic. Uh, you have your seed and how to control your seed. Then you leave it at four steps because of the lightning LoRa. CFG1. Then the sampler and scheduler, uh, there was another post that I saw. It looks like Euler and normal is quite good, at least for just normal generations and even for text, it's a little bit better than simple. So I've used Euler normal and then denoise set to one. Then the latent goes through a VAE decode and then that image output gets saved and that's it. This sample image here is one that I was trying text editing on and obviously it didn't work out very well. It's supposed to say Quen image edit, and this is one of the better generations after running it a few times for, uh, with different seeds. But still, I, I never got a perfect image output from this. And I'll have some comparisons with the number of steps and all this other stuff uh, later on. Just for a little bit of speed references, with 20 steps, the normal mode without the uh, lightning LoRa, I get about 20 seconds per iteration on 20 steps. So that's about 400 seconds. But with the four step LoRa, uh, it's about 13 steps, so about 50 seconds or so, 52 seconds. Um, a couple of the previous gens here that you've seen is 54 seconds if I don't have to rerun the text encoder. So definitely, if you want to make faster generations, uh, use the four-step LoRa. Uh, and it seems like with the GGuff, the 20 steps doesn't make a better output, so definitely keep the LoRa on. Okay, let's move on to some of the outputs. Okay, let's take a look at some of the outputs. All of these were using the four-step LoRa. First one from the intro, transform the image to 90s anime style. For a lot of these style changes, it's pretty good. There's no real issues with it. I don't know if this is actually 90s anime style, but um, but it does change it to some sort of anime style. And does keep a lot of the characteristics of the, the photo, obviously in the anime version as well. Including some of the background stuff like the lights and things. So no real issues with this. So here's another style change like the one that they had in their blog. Replace t-shirt to black t-shirt with the text Quen on it. Transform the image to Ghibli style. It seems to do that just fine. The background color changes a little bit. Not sure why. Um, but on this one, it does write the correct uh, text on the shirt. The pose is still the same. So that's pretty good. 
another one from their samples that they said that they can do. So this is changing the view um, of the subject. Change the view to the woman's left side, keep the same pose. So it does change the camera view. The pose stays relatively the same. Um, the face is a little bit different, I think, or it looks a little bit different. And the skin is definitely a little bit different in the coloring of the photo. Um, the size and proportion is also a little bit different as well. So, I mean, it does do it, but it's not perfect. So here's one that it kind of failed at. This was the input image. Change the view to the front of the woman in the hat. Keep the same pose. It understood all the elements of this woman. So her hat, um, the clothes she's wearing, and what it looks like. Uh, but it didn't keep the pose at all. I tried this a few times, and it didn't seem to do that. I'm not sure if there's another way to prompt for this. I also tried it on 20 steps, a different text encoder, and none of those actually work. So maybe it's just something that I'm doing wrong. Um, but otherwise, if she was standing just like this from the back, then it would look okay. Um, but because her pose is wrong, this isn't really like what I was asking for. And you'll see the, the size of the picture is also different as well. So it doesn't maintain like the, the same size, even though in their blog that it shows that it kind of does. Here's one example uh, that I tried in context. This one works actually quite well in uh, Quen Image Edit. So this is just a recolor of a black and white photo. This one actually keeps a lot of the proportions the same. Um, a lot of the tiny elements that was changed a little bit or missing in context is actually preserved on Quen Image Edit. Um, actually, most of it is almost like a one-to-one -one and it's just a recolor. So that's pretty good. It's a little bit smeared here. I think it's just working with very low res and maybe blurry photo to begin with. So it's not super clear. Um, but I think this one did a pretty good job. Here's another one, just a, a bigger edit for it to do. Um, this one's changed the background to an or apple orchard and then changed the oranges in the woman's hand to apples. Here you can see that it's losing a lot of the uh, source images characteristics. Maybe if you're looking from far away, it looks the same. But when you start looking at the pictures, it, it completely kind of just regenerated her face just in the same kind of pose as the original image, but it's not keeping the original image at all. The tongue, everything here is just different. Her, her hands are slightly different. Um, her hair is definitely different. This looks almost like a chat GPT version uh, of an image generator. Her sweater is also slightly colored differently. Um, the background is an apple orchard, but it looks a little bit fake. The apples are just super huge. So it doesn't look very realistic. I guess it did follow the prompt. It's just the output is not like a one-to-one -one image edit. It's more of a take the concept and kind of recreate it. And we see that happen again here in the, in the dune shot. Um, change the background to a snow-covered glacier. Add snow to the heads and shoulders of the man and woman while keeping the subject's faces and clothes the same. I've done this a few times with, with contacts already. Um, it definitely changes the background. It doesn't have an issue with that. But faces, it definitely has trouble with. So you can see the man changes completely. He looks older. There's some, they put some stubble on him. Um, and just side by side, it just doesn't look the same, obviously, as the actor. The woman also looks slightly different as well. And compared to the context version, there's just less snow on them too, uh, which is, you know, good or bad, depending on what you're looking for. But there's also a different color cast to the, the clothes and everything as well. So I'm not sure if it's like doing an in-place edit for these. And here's another one where it has trouble kind of maintaining the original source version of the image. Uh, change the setting to a restaurant, the plush toys eating spaghetti. It, it obviously understands what I'm asking for, um, but it just redraws it itself. So it's, it's not, it's the same, it's similar, but it's not the same. So it's a lot of the problems with Quen image seems to be that way. It, it's very similar to what you're looking for, but it's not the same thing. And then here's the one with the text. Um, so it, it kept showing that they were good at replacing text. So I tried it a few times, but I can never get a perfect result. The starting image was good vibes only. And making a very simple prompt to change it. Same three lines, just replace it with three different words. Uh, Quen image edit. And it just doesn't want to do that. Um, either the four step lightning or even the full 20 step. It gets a little bit better sometimes, but it still just doesn't really change that. And it also here, even though I've disconnected the, the VAE, it does do a slight zoom um, on the board. 
so the, the image proportions are not quite the same either. Maybe it's because I'm using a GIF and you need the full like 20 gig model to, to make it work properly. But um, for low VRAM users, I think for text editing, definitely don't use Quen Image Edit. Hopefully that's given you some real life examples of uh, how this Quen Image Edit works. Um, there's been a lot of videos where it shows like that it's really good. I'm not sure if it's better than Context. I think for myself, I'd probably stick to Context to do some of the image editing with text, especially. Context seems to keep the, the faces the same and different items the same, more so than what I found with Quen Image Edit. If you found the video helpful, give it a like and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one.